Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back. We were talking about youth and religion. Um, can I go straight back to Parvaz Bhai? Parvaz Bhai, we were talking about a lot of issues our young people have, identity, education, and a lot of other stuff we were talking about. Now let's talk about some um, solutions. What are the solutions, an example? Um, Isaac Bhai, in my profession as a funeral director at uh, Brickline uh, Muslim Funeral, I, f I, I see a lot of example. I mean, when in a challenging time comes, people in the community, they come together. Hmm. And you, know, uh, you can see how they're bonding, how they're connecting. And you can see how the, you know, uh, from brother to sister, daughter to son, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, mother to son, and, and, and it's a split between the whole family in terms of knowledge, in terms of understanding. One of the big solution can be in terms of family and the community to come together and, and share the knowledge, share your understanding, share your thoughts, mm. even for the parents and adults. Not just sending the children to the mosque and church is the solution. You have to go and see what they're learning. Are they enjoying what they're learning? Is, is it the right thing they're learning? You as an adult, it is our responsibility to find out whether they're learning the right version or not. Mm -hmm. And to affiliate with them, to connect with them that, yes, I understand what you're doing. If you don't enjoy, just ask me. I'm your friend. I'm not, I'm not just your father or elder brother mm -hmm. or uh, mother or sister. I'm, I'm your friend. And talk to me. You know, yeah, a lot of, lot of time we see in media like we are Muslims in this country. I mean, they're targeting, not targeting actually. This is true though, also. Like we are not engaging with the wider community. Yeah. Some places can be true, to be honest. Some places, maybe they don't speak English. They mm -hmm. don't have confidence. There's nobody probably to connect with them. It, it could be an issue. So how do we deal with that? Do, do you, is there any way we can deal with the in the adult level as well? I think a, as we were talking that, first of all, we have to start from home. We have to start talking with our neighbors, whoever they are, w whatever religion they have. And we have to lead by example as parents and elders. And if we are able to do that, our children will learn that they have to talk to their neighbors, th their friends, in a way, positive way. Of course. And their peer group can influence better more than us. Mm. You know, I, I see in my boy that uh, he listens more to their, his, his friends than me sometimes. Mm -hmm. He does, sometimes as a teen, in teenager, he does silly things. I tell him that, uh, why you did that? Well, my friend told me to do that, or my friend did this, so I'm just trying it. You know, but if we are friendly with them, and if you show by example good things, good behavior, good attitude, mm. you know, communicating with your neighbors and uh, do voluntary things, uh, you know, for the community, mm. uh, then your children will learn. Mm. And if we just uh, go to work, come back home, eat and sleep and do the same thing mm. round and round, then they will not get uh, any opportunity to learn anything from us. Rather well, you can't even influence mind. anyone because they'll know you're lazy, you're not doing anything. Honestly, that's, that's how it's going to be if yeah. you're not active yourself and say something. Mm. John, can I come to you? Um, yeah. Same question, actually. Yeah. Uh, people think we are divided. Are we divided? Yeah. Um, I think uh, a lot of the time we are divided. Uh, and I think that's a real shame, <laughs> as we've already, as we've already s described. But I think that there are a lot of really strong examples of where um, people of different faiths are working together. And um, I mean, I, there's, there's one example of, and, and, and it really is by, by how, how willing you are to meet somebody who's different from you. Um, and I, from my own experience, I, I grew up overseas um, I, I had to make friends with different people so I lived in Pakistan uh, as a teenager don't look uh, nothing like Pakistani <laughs> I, I, no, I, okay. I'm trying to grow a beard uh, <laughs> but, and successfully um, but I, I mean when I when I lived in Pakistan uh, I had if I wanted any friends I had to make friends with people who were who were different from me and uh, I made some of my, some of the best friends um, that I have um, and, and we still we still keep it in contact and uh, and that's similar similar here um, so in you know I 
you, you knew uh, a common friend, uh, so you knew Nick Coke, um, who's a, a good friend of us both, uh, who introduced us uh, because I wanted to know, I wanted to meet um, people in, in Ilford. And um, so we had a good evening when we went to mosque in Chadwell Heath. And, uh, and that started, you know, started a bit of a relationship there. Uh, where we were then, where we then had a bit. You of know, trust you you amazed me. I have to mention there. that you amazed me. You know, I remember you called me and said, "Isaac, yeah. do you know anyone in that place? I I, I live there, and um, I want to work with them." I said, "Okay, what shall I do?" He said, "Look, any anyone, I want to work with them," and I said to my friend, "Actually, let's find out for him because he really wants to work with us, man. That's really really good. How often do you find people coming to you and say, I want to work with you.'" And especially community work, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, I found someone. Then we went together. That, not really, really. You know, it's yeah. that's amazing. We don't get many young people. I mean, not <laughs> we don't get old or young, whatever. We don't yeah. get many people in that level. So that's and that was. I mean, that was kind of me reaching out to reaching out to somebody, but it's it's also happened the other way. Um, so with so in Redbridge, an, uh, an organisation called Formo, which is Federa Federation of Redbridge Muslim Organisations. Um, developed by the guys at Gardens of Peace, um, uh, the, the cemetery there, and um, so I, I I was able to visit the cemetery uh, for the first time the other day and learnt a lot about uh, Muslim burial traditions and stuff. Uh, things that I didn't know. I didn't know you would be a, yeah. an expert in these <laughs> things. Um, He's the undertaken man. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, this was you know this was a new a new experience for me. But I also learnt you know these these guys have been doing uh, collections for us, for the night shelter, for us to That's be able great, to serve. Man. That's a great example. And they've been doing it for six years. So this Sunday, um, before our Sunday morning service, I mean, every year uh, in the Muslim community in Redbridge is, is very, very, you know, super generous. Um, so all the different resources that, that will keep us going, um, it, it helping homeless people, um, Sunday morning, there's going to be a delivery um, to our place in in Ilford, um, and so at the beginning of our service, we'll you know we'll join together for the beginning of the service. We'll be together, um, and uh, there'll be a chance for us to thank to thank the guys who organise this. Uh, you know the young guys, it's young guys who come as well. Uh, they come and they they're unloading trucks. It's it's an incredible thing. Fantastic. But they're people who reached out to us. That wasn't us going. Uh, it, People he works both ways. He doesn't work from one exactly. side. He works both ways. Yeah. They yeah. are people. Honestly, they are yeah. people. Uh, wants to meet other people. Wants yeah. to learn from this. Yeah. But you said you from uh, you've been to Pakistan or you you grown up in Pakistan. Yeah. Do you know any? Would do anything? Any, I any know words? a little bit. Yeah, I can understand a lot of it, um, and uh, I can I can remember some of the words. So I can remember I I can remember some of the swear words. Oh no no no! We won't, no, say, no, 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 <laughs> won't <laughs> say that. <laughs> but the um, they're always the things you learn first, right? But the I can remember counting. Go on then, numbers. go on. Uh, Let's ek, try. Uh, ek do teen, char panch, che sat at, no, das. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like Bengali. <laughs> 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 no, it's true. That's what we yeah. say. It. That's how we say it. Yeah. yeah. Ap kaisi hai? Uh, TK. <laughs> That's good. Actually. Um, bhai, um it, it's amazing what's happening in, in, in Ilford and that area. They're working yeah. together. It shows like in one community. It, it, that's the beautiful of it. That's that's how it is. And um, there are a lot of people actually in Muslim community. They're longing to work with people. They don't know many people. That's the thing. They would do amazing stuff if they want to yes. do it. Yeah. Last uh, probably three four years, we, uh, the Muslim community being the one of the uh, best charity giver, especially mm -hmm. in Ramadan. You know, yeah. it's it's amazing. They have a really big heart, but they don't yeah. know people. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we all good though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, what can we do? You know, we, we can't say, um, I know there's only 12% of the people are connected with the young people. I'm talking about religious scholars and, and in that level. Mm. It's also our duty as well to connect with young people and tell them about the religion. Sometimes it's easier because they look like us, we look like them and we know their language as well. Mm. So how do we play that role? I think one of the most important part is we have to understand our youths, our children. And as we were talking about that, there are a lot of different aspects of our life. You know, and uh, there are a lot of different ways. There are different programs going on. I'm a school governor for quite a long time. There were a lot of parenting, uh, you know, uh, classes going on in mm -hmm. Tower Hamlets, New Ham, and multi ethnic paras. Uh, how we can guide our children. And for, for our children, there are a lot of uh, projects, like uh, Duke of Edinburgh project is one of mm -hmm. uh, the example. 
our, our children can go and communicate with different communities, other, other their, their peer groups. But most important part is at home. We have to teach our children at home what is right and what is wrong. And it is by example, mm. not by just you know, saying it. Mm. We have to give them example. You know, and if we are involved in a lot of uh, charitable work, volunteer work, right? you said I'm involved in charities as well. Mm. Uh, you know, and this can help them mm. in terms of worldly life, in terms of their career, their education, yeah. going into university, go, getting into good jobs. I mean, if uh, they can show in the CV that uh, they have done this charity work, this community work, it will reflect very good in their CV. So this will interest them more. Mm. At the same time, we will get the opportunity to bring them to uh, what we are thinking that is the right way. So again, down to uh, mostly guiding our children. Mm. I think one of, the the mention, one of the questions actually you answered before, saying, we have to know what our kids are learning, wherever they are. Yeah. Are they in the madrasa, are they in the school, wherever they are. And I think it's, it's the crucial part. We can play a role and bring them in the middle. Mm. Absolutely. Religious guide is fine. They only saying what is very, very important, mm. spiritual side and everything else. And if he doesn't know the real w world at all, mm. he will be isolated. Yeah. That's what's happening at the moment, mm -hmm. I assume. Mm -hmm. And me and you can play that role. Look, yeah. I have the expert in the community. I do this, 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 this. And they know the spiritual side. And we come together. We know the basics of religion anyway. So mm -hmm. we don't. Basics is important to give right basic needs of religion to our young people. And they, we can shape them and mm -hmm. tell them how it should, how it should be. Sometimes a lot of our scholars, especially Muslim scholars, are from outside the UK. And they have their one way of understanding. Yeah. They can, they're not connecting well with the young people because they don't speak the same language. Mm. That's reality, actually. It doesn't mean it, they're bad, they're good. They're doing a lot of good true. stuff. Yeah. Mm. So we could play a role. So yeah. I think in this way, what happening is hand in hand. We, we get to understand how difficult for them, scholars, mm. to teach young to people. And yes. we can you know, respect that, too. Mm. In the same time, they would know that like, we're playing a role, too. Without our role, it's half done. Yeah. No, Isaac, you said it right. I mean, when we learn, for example, uh, you know, reading Quran back home, even our teachers, those Imam who taught us, <laughs> they didn't know the meaning of it. You know, and uh, I remember when I was young, I asked question about what's the meaning of it, and he said, "Well, you don't need to know. You just because need I don't to know. know how to read." You That's don't need it. to know because I don't know. Okay. But nowadays it's very easy. I mean, people can, even the young children, they can uh, take out their internet or mobile phone and they can find out the meaning of it. Mm. But most important part is to give the right context, teach them. If we know, then it's good. If we don't know, then there are institutions we can take them. There are uh, different classes we can take them. It doesn't have to be, you know, very frequent. Whenever we get opportunity, we create opportunity for them, we go there and they will know the right path, right message. Mm. Every religion, that is good thing. That's the starting point. Yeah. And if we are abide by the guidelines of religion, then we, we, we can do humanity in a great thing for the humanity. Mm. This, that's the most important message. So that's the, if, the, if we are able to give this message to our children, you know, with example, with our, uh, you know, doing things, how we do things, how we help our other people, how other people can benefit. Like, you know, I, I uh, uh, run a charity in East London, a you know, hospital field, SSB, a community trust. We've got a project called Poetry Node. I mean, we, uh, we've got a training and enterprise project for uh, disabled youths. Mm. You know, sometimes when they are over 16, uh, they are left behind to do nothing just mm. for you know, days until they go. Mm. But in our project, they come and they learn to uh, you know, make things with wood, carpentry. Okay. We've got trainer, they train them. They make different uh, souvenir things and then uh, you know, they sell them online and uh, you know, to yeah. different institutions. Very interesting. It's a yeah. very fantastic project. Mm. And whenever I get chance, I go there and I, I sit with them and I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if I take my children there, they know that it's something different. Yeah. I'm doing for the humanity. 
I ha I'm getting nothing from it. It's a voluntary work. Mm -hmm. What you are doing, Salvation Army, a lot of charitable work. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you go above and beyond of your you know, uh, duty mm -hmm. to do things, you know. Yeah. That's, the, that's the teaching, by yeah. example. Yeah. And if we are able to teach our children by example, that's the best way, I believe. I think this is what religion is, actually. Yeah. You just described the religion itself, yeah. actually, yeah. basically. John, can I ask you, what kind of qualities we, we are looking into young people? Or what can we help to know? Because this is so important. Yeah. Your moral quality is so important, because that will shape you who you are. Yeah. Well, I think, I, I think you've touched on a number of different, different qualities that we, that we look for in people. But one, I think one thing... Um, that's very important is being able to develop leadership skills in, in people and recognizing who who in uh, in the younger generations are the emerging leaders or the leaders even leaders now and sometimes we can treat people uh, who are younger than us we, we think we we look down on them because they're young um, but in the in the Bible, it, for us, it says, you know, don't don't let them look down on you <laughs> yeah. because you are young, um, and and so there's a something that I'm always excited by is when I see a new a new leader emerging, uh, somebody stepping up to take on responsibility, uh, somebody who's stepping up to um, lead their their peers, um, and to set a new example. I find that I find that so exciting, and and when you get to be a part of that, oh, it's it, it really is the best thing. And I'm going to ask you something, man. Go How ahead. do you select leaders in Salvation Army? What do you look into? Because this is yeah, a organic, uh, um, I would say, a group of people. Yeah, amazing. You know, you don't drink, you don't smoke. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of things you marry within your uh, Salvation yeah. Army. Your kids are also becomes. It's amazing concept, yeah. honestly. So how do you select leadership? So, um, so the way the way I do it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is I uh, is 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 in the same way that you want to meet people who are different from you. You need to meet people who are similar to you yeah. as, as well, and, and to be able to spend time. Um, so for me, I spend time with people who are in my congregation. Um, I try to I try to visit them. So whether that's in a coffee shop or in their home, and and you could you could see um, people who are, are thinking about the bigger picture. People who are thinking about what's beyond their own life. People who are thinking about uh, the difference that they want to make beyond their own, even beyond their own postcode, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's something about giving people responsibility. Um, so that's one of the ways um, that, that we try to do that at the Salvation Army in Ilford. We try to be very intentional about giving people more and more responsibility. Um, so. Uh, I, I keep talking about the night shelter because that's what. Can you give us one example, us. like that person yeah, you picked up yeah. because of this, 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 and I, I put <coughs> in there. Can you pick, pick yeah. one story? Um, so, I can, so there's one one uh, guy that I can think of. Uh, I don't want to embarrass him um, by by naming him, but okay. but for example, his when I when I met him, his his main responsibility. Um, so in we we have little small envelopes that people put their tithe in. That's what they uh, put their you know their monthly or their weekly uh, money in to contribute to the church and um, that was his main responsibility at the time uh, but this I mean, he's a, you, could, you could see you just have to meet him to know that he's a capable guy and for him um, for what what we saw was every time every time you give him some responsibility he lives up to it and he flourishes in that um, and so to a point now where he's you know he's same age maybe a year younger than me um, but where he had kind of very little responsibility he still has that responsibility but where he had that he's now he, he's now kind of emerging into the most the most senior kind of non-employed uh, non you know uh, non-employed leader at, at the Salvation Army in Ilford uh, and seeing his growth over those few years um, seeing him take on responsibility to um, to lead people in the night shelter, to lead people in, in Bible study classes, uh, with prayer, um, having him deliver sermons uh, on Sundays. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been one of the most exciting things that I've been able to be involved in. As Fantastic. A, as a How do you feel, officer. man? I'm sure you feel so proud of him. I feel so. seriously proud of the guy. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, it, that really gives meaning to, to the work that I do. 
that. Yeah, Parvati Bhai, you know, this is amazing, honestly. Yeah. If we could, especially in Bangladesh, I think, you know, somehow, if we could have get young people into changing the society as a whole, you pick up the right person from the beginning and you change him, you shape him and you put him in the power. Yeah. They will change the world. Not just like I know it's a tradition of us in everywhere now, wherever we are, we're going to stay there. We're not going to go anywhere until we've been shot or we've gone somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. If we can change this stuff like that, can you imagine, I mean, how amazing it is? I mean, oh, definitely. I think I'm, I'm involved in a charity. We are, we are working, we are supporting, uh, you know, um, underprivileged and uh, orphan children yeah. for their mainstream education in Bangladesh. And I met quite a few uh, boys and girls. They're so capable, mm. so kind and nice, you know. Mm. But they're often, and some of uh, their parents, they're not able to support them for their education. Yeah. Let alone, you know, uh, living, uh, you know, and other things is unbelievable. But you can see in their eyes, if they're given opportunity, yeah. they can do great things. And with our charity, Alhamdulillah, we are, we are supporting them as much as we can. We have started it. And uh, I think that's but the how that's do the we? How do we? Because this is a bigger thing, isn't it? It's, it's mm -hmm. about the citizenship. How do we engage government into this kind of stuff? Because this is we do in very small level, but this is supposed to be for any government anywhere in the world to pick up the the, the best and give them something. I how do we engage with them? Without I government, I we can't do it. Uh, brother just said. I mean, our society is mostly influenced by uh, you know policy making and everything by government. But we, as common people, we can play our own part mm. by our way of doing things, involving ourselves with the charity, with the mosque, with the church. Mm. You know, the first discipline is to go to the mosque. I mean, for us Muslims, yeah. and you know, uh, attending a congregation in prayers, right? Yeah. So that we can know our community, know our neighbors, know our friends and relatives, and then go to the street and you know, uh, get to know your neighbors. And you know, with, with, with this kind of work, these are good examples for our children to you know, get to be engaged with the community and uh, you know, to choose the right path. But uh, I think in terms of uh, uh, country-wise, Britain is one of the greatest country, greatest nation, mm. uh, where uh, we, the common people, we donate hugely in terms of charitable activities and humanitarian activities. You know, uh, whenever there is any crisis, wherever in the world, mm. we donate wholeheartedly mm. and try to help people. You know, things are happening in Syria and Middle East and other countries. Mm. But we have, we, we don't see who is suffering, what religion they are from and uh, what caste they are from. We are just trying to help as much as we can. That's the message you should, you know, carry. I don't know if yeah. you know, in this country, I mean, there is, I'm just looking at the MCB side, you know, they have, we have 10,000 Muslim millionaires in this country. The project you are running, I mean, they should apply the role that, I mean, this is an amazing way to put young people into Absolutely. education and bring them out yeah. as a star of our nations. Yeah. Uh, the, the people are doing it uh, with their own right. Yeah. It's not just us, of course, we, we have just started lot of we, we have got we can see a lot of different charities I and mean, of course the Ramad when Ramadan comes people raise funds in different channels we donate I mean uh, whatever we can in a different charity and a lot of good things are going on in term, uh, by the NGOs and charities mm. in many different parts of the world including in this country mm. I mean government is cutting right left and center you know they are uh, Dividing community by cutting uh, funding, you know, social funding, community funding. But charities, they are picking up the mm. pieces. Mm. Salvation Army, you know, Muslim Aid and other different mm. charities. Mm. We are picking up the pieces. Yeah. And I think if we see the bigger picture and try, you know, join in the blame culture, then yeah, that's <laughs> it's going to be it's going to yeah. be challenging. Yeah. I mean, we, we should try to do as much as we can with uh, whatever ability we have. Can I come back yeah. on that after the break? Yes, sure. Oh, thank sure. you. No, no, this is amazing. The viewers, uh, we're just going to go for another break, inshallah. That's the last one. I promise. I'll see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullah.